What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to the road to glory. First thing we're going to do today is complete the Philip Lahm end of an era SBC. We went and got Alonso yesterday. I am going to go and buy a shadow card for him um, if there are any on the market and if they're cheap enough. But first thing we're going to do dudes before I go and get chem styles is we are going to go and get ourselves. Let me see if there's anything new out as well because it's just turned 6 o'clock. Um... These the, Those loans are just a waste, aren't they? These are still there for a fair time. Nine days left. He yeah, literally extended it by a full week. Anyway, um, I am going to go and get Philip Lahm. I, I don't know which team which team of the season players I'm going to trade in, right? So in terms of um, what we need is we need a ones-to-watch item. I think I've got two ones-to-watch items. Uh, one being Embolo, who is tradable, and one being Saponara. Was that who it was? The goalkeeper? Would have been easier for me to go uh, high to I've got so many reds that I can trade in as well that are high rated. It's actually much easier to get Lahm as well because he's only a, a sorry, sporty yellow. Um, yeah, it's easier to get Lahm because uh, he's a lower rated team, right? You just need an 84 rated team. So, instead of using a team of the week card, I could just use, sorry, instead of using a red card, I could use a, um, I could use that inform that I've got. Um, but I'm more than happy to get rid of pretty much any of these dudes. Like, Driussi can go, Gelson Martins can go, Marcelo can go, Roger can go, Ravet can go, Caldara can go. Obviously, I'm not going to use all of these dudes. You only need one. I do need to put three Team of the Seasons in. Crescito, I am more than happy to get rid of. Uh, he never features in my... Uh, I know it's a good card, but he just never features. Um, Pereira, definitely, because I've got the red version. And Smolov is basically a carbon copy of Fernando Torres. You know, I think Torres has actually got better stats. If we look at Torres compared to Smolov, Torres has got same pace, same shooting, more passing, more dribbling, more defending, more physical. What's the point of, of using Smolov uh, as a sub when I don't even need subs anyway, but I, I've, I've had him for how long? Don't use him. So, with that in mind, uh, what we can do is we can put Smolov in... Boom. We can put Crescito in. Boom. That gives us a nice big rating straight off the bat and helps with the chemistry. We need 70 chemistry. We put Sportiello in goal. Boom. I don't know why I keep saying boom. Uh, we'll put Pereira in here. And instead of using the inform, we'll use Caldara because strong link to Sportiello and soft link to... Uh, to in fact, it might be better to put Crescito there, actually. Um, so that is all of our stuff done. Now we just need an 84 rated squad. Fortunately, I, I don't think I need much out of that to make it an 84 rated squad because I've got so many high rated players. The only issue is going to be whether or not I have enough chemistry to do it. And that's a good start there with the strong link with Tadic and uh, what's his face. Um, do we have any gold centre mids? No. Uh, do we have any gold strikers? No. Wow. Um, <clears throat> let me just go and have a look at any goal player I actually have and we'll fit it in and we'll see how far I am off with rating. So we'll, we'll take uh, Schmeichel, we'll take Tovan. Bear in mind as well, I've got 400,000 coins in the uh, in the club right now, which is obviously very nice. Ooh, Palinia will be good. We've got a lot of players here. This pa Yeah, Palinia will be good because he gives chemistry to uh, your main man, uh, Danilo Pereira. Coates can go in there. That's an 81 rated squad with 65 chemistry. Tovan. Right, so that's the team. That's the rating is done here. Uh, it's just whether or not I can get it up to 70 chemistry. That's 65 chemistry. 67 chemistry. What have I got? I've got a 70... Oh, Ratasitsky here. 68 chemistry. Is there a way to get this... A little bit better. I literally just need two chem points. And I could just trade two CDM to two CM cards, right? But let's have a look at what other players I've got. A right back would be perfect. I could just go and buy a right back, right? But I'm sure I've got the, the necessary uh, players here. Robles and Manone could be helpful. Just because Italiano... Bang. Look at that. That is spectacular. Three untradable team of the seasons that I literally never use. 
like Crescito is a decent card as well. It's very well rounded. I've never used him. I've had him for how long? Never used him. Danilo Pereira, I have the red version of this exact same card, so that's no big deal at all. And Smolov is a carbon copy of Torres, and I've never used Smolov. Caldara, useless red card that I'm never going to use. Happy to get rid of him. Sportiello is untradeable as well. That is not bad to trade in for Philip Lahm, in my opinion. So now we get ourselves SBC Philip Lahm, and he goes into our second team as well. And now our second team is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. We've got two premium end of the year SBC cards. We've got red cards. We've got team of the season cards. We've got the lot dudes. Look at this for a team. Look at that for a team. And everyone, as I said before, 10 chem all around and eight chem on three. Now, depending on who the SBCs are next week, we'll well, this team might change again a little bit further. Um, but for today, I'm, I'm excited to go and play with these dudes. I'm going to need to go and get... I don't know if I want... It's, it's unnecessary. I'm, I'm probably just going to go and get a Catalyst for... I, I probably already have a Catalyst card for Larm. Um, it seems uh, unreasonable putting uh, Shadow on him because he already has 98 defending and he basically has full uh, defending. I think there's only one thing that... Let me, let me have a brief look on Footheads. Uh, to see what his defending stats actually are and to see whether or not I want to get the defensive stats. So his heading is 71. Everything else is perfect. Uh, it might be might be prudent to put an anchor on him. Yeah, I think anchor. I'm going to go with an anchor on Larm and I'm definitely going to go with an, a shadow on Alonso just because I want to give him that big pace boost. And, it, and his defending then goes up to 99 as well. 99 everything and 90 pace. Yeah, so I need one shadow and one anchor for Lam and Alonso. And the best thing is, dudes, not only do we have 410,000 coins in the bank right now for the two premium SBCs next week, we also have three 100k packs, 150k pack, uh, wait, is that four 100k packs? Yeah, what? one rare gold pack, three 100k packs, a 50k pack, and a, a prime gold players pack. So I've got plenty of stuff to, to still open, when something reasonable comes in packs because there's no point me opening it now I don't I don't I literally don't need anything out of it I don't there's nothing that I, I don't need coins for anything um, so I think we're in a we're in a real good spot on this account right now and I feel like we're gonna have two phenomenal phenomenal teams by the end of the year um, what I'll do is I, I will use um, the coins I've got to get totty uh, I might get Dirk out at some stage anyway, just because why not? You know, he's cost like a hundred thousand coins or so, so it might be worth getting him. Um, so we we'll pop a we we'll pop a shadow onto uh, Xavi Alonso. I'm I'm legitimately excited to go and have a have a run with this team and see how it plays. And you guys are going to see that uh, very very shortly. Um, Alonso is going to be my CDM now as well instead of Kadira, uh, which is great because although Kadira, like. Kadira was good, but I think Alonso might just be better. I wonder. I wonder. Even if even if Alonso is bad, it doesn't matter. I traded in literally nothing but untradeable items that I don't use to get him, and he is going into my team. So I'm going to be using a card that is incredible instead of not using lots of cards that are also incredible. Uh, I think that's a fair trade. And then what we'll do in the next episode, dudes, is the next episode we will finish off the footies SBCs, because I've still got to do Jack Butland, Sané, Lucas, Bellarabi. I've still got to do all of this, uh, so we'll do that in the next episode. But that, guys, is Philip Lahm done. Um, that is Philip Lahm and now uh, Xavi Alonso completed. Look at that for a team. That is special. That is special. What I do want to do, actually, is get it so that... Um, and I think this won't be difficult to do either, because now that I've got who I've got... I want Alonso in here, I want Ericsson at Cam, Son up front, and Stindl was as one midfielder there. So I, I need to change around uh, Icardi and Salah, and then I'll be set. If I could just change Icardi and Salah, I'll be very, very happy with how this team is looking. Is that... and, and what I could do very, very easily is go full Premier League. I could go full Premier League now. I could even start in a 4-1-2-1-2, get Alonso on 8 chemistry, Stindl on 8 chemistry, and everybody else on 10 chemistry. Wow. 
Yeah, I'm, I, I, don't, I, I don't know what to do with that, but I could definitely do something with that. Anyway, this is the team we're going to be using um, in the next couple of games. So let's get into the gameplay. Okay, guys, so into the gameplay we go. There is some for Champs games here to 18 wins. And then that's it. And then we show some SBCs and then we're going to go live. I played a lot of games on stream and I recorded them all. You know, sometimes when my footage goes corrupt, it's the something to do with the audio with uh, the Elgato is screwing me. I think I need to completely uninstall and reinstall the hardware and the software. Because every now and then, the, like, I can tell when the audio is sp like, it spikes, it goes... And it just keeps making that noise constantly. And when that happens, the footage is unusable, right? It, it, the green screen pops up, it, it, it's blurry, it chops out like minutes at a time. So all the footage that I recorded on stream is unusable, which really sucks. But I went to 25 wins. Uh, I was going to stop at 18 wins. I did stop at 18 wins. I stopped at 18 and 6. Um, and then after 18 and 6, I, um, I started streaming and I thought, let me just play some games, see if I'm enjoying it. We'll go to whatever, whatever rank is next. And I've got to be honest, I was hating it. The gameplay this weekend league was the worst for me it's ever been. I know some people enjoyed it. But generally speaking, like, remember that weekend about four weekends ago? And I actually got elite that weekend. And I hated the gameplay. Um, I was getting really, really angry at how the passes weren't being trapped properly. How they weren't going the directions I was aiming them at. at how, how the auto lunges were just failing me. And I know that, I know that everyone deals with this. Um, but I'm not good enough to win games during bad gameplay. I'm, ju I'm just not that good at FIFA. When the gameplay is smooth and clean and I can play the game how I want to play it. I can beat almost anyone on any given day. I've shown that all throughout the year by beating literally tens, if not hundreds of top 100 players. You know, everyone that ever finishes in the top 100, I've likely played most of them once or twice and I've likely beaten them. So when the gameplay is good for me, I'm, I'm on point. But also throughout the year, I've shown that I, I'm not good enough to sustain that kind of uh, quality. And it doesn't help always when um, when the the gameplay is bad because I, I just can't deal with that that kind of stuff. So when I was playing on stream, um, I got to like 20 wins and I was like, Do you know what? Let me just play to 21 now because I'm one win away from the next rank. Um, and then I wanted to show someone what like some new people to the stream what the gameplay is like. So I played one more. And before you know it, I was on like 23 wins. And I was like, well, screw it. I might as well go to 25 now. But I actually went from 18 and 6, which is, is decent, not great. Considering I was 8 and 0 as well, that's not great at all. But I went from 18 and 6 um, to, um, to 25 and 10. So I only won 7 and lost, what, 4. I mean, that's, that in itself isn't even that bad. I had 5 games left. I could probably have gone on to get Elite. I might have lost 2 out of the 5. I might not have done. I might have won 4 out of the 5 and got Elite. I just didn't care. And what that leads into is the first comment I picked is from Jack Whitaker. says, Net, why do you still play foot champs? There is nothing to play for as the rewards are dead. Um, and this whole FIFA is dead thing is quite frustrating uh, 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 for somebody who loves FIFA. Because if FIFA is dead to you, and I get this in streams all the time. People come in the streams and are like, why are you playing this game? This game is dead. And I just sit there and think to myself, why are you, why are you watching this game then? If it's dead to you, don't be here. And the same thing for Jack Whitaker. If, if there's nothing to play for in Foot Champs and you're asking why am I still playing it, the only thing I can think of is why are you still watching me play it? Because if you're not enjoying me playing it, you don't have to watch. But I am thoroughly enjoying it still. There are good rewards to play for, not brilliant rewards, um, but good rewards to play for. Um, so for monthly specifically, that's what I'm playing for. And that's why I was only going to go to 18 wins. 18 this week, 18 next week, and try and go for Elite the following week because Team of the Year awards. But I end up going up to 25, so I only need 35 more wins now to get um, Elite 1 for the month. So I could, you know, I could have a real easy week next week and just go get 10, 12 wins, and then I'll be fine. Uh, or I could also go and play up to Gold 1 next week and get those 200k packs. And the reason why I'm playing it is because contrary to what you guys may like or not like, I actually thoroughly enjoy FIFA at this time of the year. Might be dead for you. Like, the reason why I play Foot Champs instead of Divisions is because the rewards are there. What am I going to do? Play 40 games of Division 1 over the weekend and maybe rack up 60,000 coins from rewards, probably around 30,000 coins. Or I could play Foot Champs for 30 or 40 games and get two 100k packs and 50,000 coins and play at a competitive level. I know which one I prefer. You know, when I play other games, I don't ever play the non-competitive versions. Um, when I play League of Legends, I only play ranked. When I play 
Overwatch, I only played ranked. You know, when I play games, I literally only like to play ranked because I like to test myself as a player. And in FIFA, you can test yourself the best as a player in foot champs. And yeah, okay, sometimes the gameplay is bad, but sometimes you, you're bad, sometimes I'm bad, you know. But um, I, although the rewards are dead, I, I love the concept of foot champs. I love the idea of playing competitive gameplay. And I've got this incredible team now that I've worked the whole year to get. And now people are like, you should stop playing this game. Hell no. I didn't bust my gut off for like, I don't know, 10,000 hours, 5,000 hours this year to build this incredible team to then get this team and be like, right, that's it. Got the team, job done. No, I want to play the hell out of this team. I'll play this team in divisions, in daily knockout tournaments, in, in uh, foot champs. I will play the living hell out of this team because I've spent so long trying to earn it. Um, so that's why. Next comment is from uh, WWE22IFY. says, hey Nep, you didn't want to get Totti because of his stamina. However, Alonso only has eight more stamina. Why did you decide to take Alonso but not Totti? No hate, keep it up, man. By the way, just so you know, when you have a, a comment that is questioning something that I did, I don't assume it's hate. You don't have to keep putting, like I see so many comments, no hate, man, just a question. When people say no hate, it makes me feel like they're trying to garner a reaction. So they put no hate to try and like, Stop it. You know, no offense, but you look like an idiot. You know, you say no offense first, even though it's offensive. Like That's what I get from when there's no hate. You don't have to tell me there's no hate. If, if there's genuinely no hate, I can feel that there's no hate, you know. Uh, that's fine. Um, this is straight off the bat. You said Alonso only has eight more stamina. Well, straight off the bat, Alonso has eight more stamina. That's point number one. Alonso has more stamina. He has almost 10% more stamina than Totti does. That's a hell of a lot. Secondly, Alonso has medium low work rates, which means he won't he won't like go far from the CDM role, and thirdly, the attackers, uh, like especially considering Alonso, I, I we'll get to it in a second, but the attackers drain stamina quicker because you sprint more with them. The CDM sometimes drains stamina a lot if they have the wrong work rates. For example, when I had Kadira, he had high high work rates. He lost a lot of stamina quickly because he was constantly up and down the field. So I was constantly sprinting to get him into place defensively. And because he was always in the attacking third, I was constantly using him in the build-ups and the offensive third, so he was burning more stamina. With Alonso, due to the way his stamina is, and the way his work rates are, you don't need to sprint to get him back into position because he has medium-low work rates. He's already in position. So you sprint far, far less with Xavi Alonso than you would do with Francesco Totti. So on top of the fact that he has eight more stamina, he also burns his stamina far, far slower. So unless you're in a really tough game, um, in which case I would sub him out if he got too low on stamina, um, unless you're in a really tough game, that I've actually, of the games I played with him in this weekend league, I don't think there was one time where I thought, man, I need to sub him out. I think every single time I was like, wow, he's still got a lot of stamina because of the way he plays in game. Uh, so that that's why I picked so many comments. I did not think it would take me 10 minutes to get this far. Um, I guess, uh, let me go for another one. Um, so Neil O'Shea says, at the start of FIFA 18, I'm going to be so nervous selling my players because I just know the players were so expensive for SBCs, anyone else. So my plan for FIFA 18, in terms of what I'm going to keep in my club, is based on what has happened this year. I've bought and sold items for, for cheap and expensive a lot this year. What I'm going to do next year is I'm going to hoard everything until that card is worth a crap ton. Uh, because every card at one stage or another has gone three, four, five, ten times the value that they base it at. And if cards go to a super low standard of value, like when the 83s and 84s were a thousand coins, I'm just going to collect, 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 buy them up and wait until they go expensive again. I'll talk more about that maybe in, uh, in another video, but for now, we did Jack Butland. I don't know how I'm going to fit him into the team. I'll show you guys that in a second because a lot of guys thought that I could still get him in a team with Smalling and Alonso, not realising the way the chemistry changes when I swap around as Bill Equator and Smalling. Um, and a lot of people uh, wanted me to put him in, but I don't think I can get him in. And we did all the other three SBCs, so we've got the three right mids for the, the thing to happen on Tuesday. Um, but yeah, that's better I'll be done, so I will be right back. So guys, here is where we are on the account. I have sold some more items um, Gustavo's, Bellarabi's, some bronze cards, uh, still got a fair bit here, Alvarez still yet to sell, hopefully he'll eventually go for the 49k, I've left myself one Luis Gustavo and one Bellarabi for Friday, assuming that we're going to need them, maybe we won't, maybe we will, um, it's already late on Monday and I'm yet to, um, 
I'm yet to start the DKT. Tomorrow's video will be the DKT. Of course, I do want to win it. No less because the prize is pretty awesome. Uh, you get a team of the tournaments player, uh, which will probably be required for Friday as well. My, my opinion is that it's going to be Gerald and Lampard. One of them will require a team of the tournaments player and one of them will require a Movember player. And um, the reason why I think Movember cards will be required is because they're in the weekend league rewards for elite and higher. So I believe that they're going to be required because that's exactly the same as screen cards and one to watch cards um, and for birthday cards for previous uh, SBCs. And um, so I want to win that. But also, they're tradable. So if a pack like the 98 Record Breaker Ronaldo is in that pack and Ibra and Aubameyang and stuff, if I pack one of those dudes, that'd be great. I'll be able to pick them up and, and get some good coins. Uh, as you can see, dudes, for monthly, I've got 55 wins already out of the 75 games. Not the best record, to be perfectly honest. Uh, as I said, last weekend league, I won 30 and lost 10. But I loved the gameplay. I enjoyed all 40 games. This weekend league, I won 25 and lost 10. <coughs> and I hated the gameplay. Even the the game when I was eight and zero, I still was, I wasn't enjoying the game. Seems like the last maintenance update just did something with the gameplay. I can't get clean games anymore. Um, I've never I, like last year. I used to watch Inception play FIFA, and he would murder people. Right, he played draft pretty much exclusively. He would just slaughter people. He won draft after draft after draft. He had millions of coins just from playing draft. And he used to complain about the game. He'd be like, oh man, the gameplay is really bad right now. I'm not enjoying this. And I'd be saying, what are you talking about? Like, you're winning every game. He literally had like a 10 to 1, 20 to 1 win-loss ratio. The dude had like 3,000 wins to like 180 losses. You know, his record was just ridiculous. And I was like, how can you win that often and still sit there and be like, I don't like this game? I now know what he meant because in foot champs when you're playing competitive game and the game plays bad, even if you win, you can go out of a game thinking, man, that was terrible. Um, and that's what it felt like for me this weekend. Last weekend, 40 games, lost 10, loved it. Um, this weekend, not so much. So uh, I have got Jack Butland as you just saw. This is my main team. I want to just give you a quick rundown of the stats as well of the players. So Lukaku now has 120 games, 98 goals, 46 assists. Uh, his goal to game ratio is slowly dropping out, but that's because I actually use him as a super sub a lot in the second team, and I'll explain why when we go into the second team. Uh, if you look at um, Hazard, 119 games, he also gets used as a sub a lot, but then Merton's only 110 games, and he doesn't get used as a sub. So uh, there's been at least 10 games where um, Lukaku has been used as a sub. Now, if you remove those 10 games from his stats, you know that's a much better goal to game ratio. With that being said... Uh, 144 goal contributions in 120 games for a, a two-person striker is actually really good. He doesn't play as a lone striker. He plays as a partnership up front with Eden Hazard. Um, and Eden Hazard has 150 goal contributions in 119 games. He actually has more goal contributions than Lukaku does in one less game. Dries Mertens as well, uh, as you can see there, 120 goal contributions in 110 games. This trio is the most dynamic trio I've ever used up front. It has everything. It has a small pace merchant. It's got four four-star, four-star high-low work rates. It's got four-star, four-star high-medium work rates. It's got a tanky striker with four-star weak foot. It's got a left footer. It's got two right footers. It has everything. It's really, really good. Then we've got Den Donker dudes. 113 games, 11 goals, 14 assists for a CDM. Honest to God, if you can afford this card... Go and buy him. If you can't get him into your team on five chemistry, sub him on as a sub immediately. He is the best central defensive midfielder I have ever used in any FIFA. Luka Modric, 73 goals, 73 games, eight assists, 18 goals. Doesn't really get involved too, uh, too much offensively, but is still very, very prolific in the team. And I would expect Hamšík to have better stats. Yeah, 69 games, 13 goals, 18 assists. So compared to Modric, um, he's got same assists, five more goals in four less games and he does just get more involved offensively um, we then go to the left back Marcelo obviously he's a new card from last week 51 games already on Marcelo uh, since we got him in our rewards Sergio Ramos 114 games it's Koulibaly on 70 games I love Koulibaly and Ramos partnership as well it's just great and Danny Alves uh, 66 games as well we go on to the um 6-9 games on Van Sar 2. Go on to the bench, 177 games for Stindl, 105 games for Son with 96 goals and 41 assists. That, again, is just an outstanding goal-to-game ratio. Uh, Alonso won 35 games, 
Azpilicueta now 35 games, Eriksen 31 games, Hummels 115 games. He's actually a sub for me. I bring him on as a central defense midfielder if and when Dendonka or Alonso gets tired. Um, we got Alonso with seven games and two goals from that. I think one of them is a penalty and one of them was a long shot uh, for Alonso there. Um, Icardi, now this dude is insane. Um, his goal to game ratio is pretty good anyway. 35 goal, goal contributions in 31 games. Um, but he gets subbed off a lot for Lukaku. And the reason why is because he's not quite tall enough. Um, if he was like 6'1 or 6'2, I would never sub him off because he's brilliant. Uh, but the fact that he's 5'11, uh, there is, I play this game a very specific way that I require a target man. And Son at 6 foot and Icardi at 5'11, if I'm up against big defenders or, or someone that has a central defense midfielder, I struggle to win the aerial battles that usually uh, like generate me chances to score. So if that's the case, or if somebody switches to a 4-2-3-1 after they go 1-0 up or something, I'll immediately bring Lukaku on because I know he'll win those aerial duels, whereas Akadi wouldn't. Um, so with that in mind, 31 games, 24 goals, 11 assists, that's a really good return. Chris Smalling already 16 games, Calais on 19 games, 14 goals and 10 assists. Only as a substitute. Crazy, he's so good. Uh, Lyon with the seven games as well. Mo Salah there. Uh, 25 goal contributions in 34 games, not ideal. Um, I'm struggling to get used to him. He's just like he's very, very similar to uh, to Mertens in many respects. Uh, when we compare the two, same pace. Mertens has better shooting, better passing, and a little better dribbling. Same defending and less physical. They're both four star, four star. Mertens is a uh, high low five seven, whereas uh, Salah is a bit taller. I think five nine, but high medium. You would think Salah would generate as many goal opportunities as Mertens would but for some reason he just doesn't so those are the two teams right now um that's where we're at after 25 games oh I sold something else so let's go who was it who was it it was that uh, Japanese so I've got um 450,000 coins in the bank we've got 50,000 coins to come two more 100k packs to come um next weekend league obviously I'm going to be doing the Gerard and Lampard assuming it's them if it's not them we'll do whoever else and then to show you the second squad and to, as to why Jack Butlin doesn't fit, uh, as much as I would like to use him because I could sell um, David De Gea on, uh, with Jack Butlin in goal, bros, let's, let me show you uh, how it works. Um, Jack Butlin in goal, boom. So Jack Butlin here, Alonso doesn't get the chemistry. So people said, oh, just switch around these two, boom. Well here, Chris Smalling doesn't get the chemistry, nor does Xavi Alonso, because now he doesn't get the link that he needs from Azpilicueta. So it's better this way. I mean, I could play it like this and just play Azpilicueta on eight chemistry. If I got the right manager in, it wouldn't be a problem. Um, but I don't necessarily know if I want to do that. What might happen uh, when the new cards come is that I may well get rid of Lam and put Kyle Walker in here, uh, have Gerard and Lampard as the two centre mids, and then I can swap it around like this because with uh, with Walker, in fact, let me let me show you how it would look. And I don't know what the clubs are going to be uh, for Gerard and Lampard. And I don't even know if it's going to be Gerard and Lampard, right? I'm just assuming because I, I feel like it's going to be those. But if we have a team of the season Walker there, if we have a Stephen Steve Gerard Gerard Stephen Gerard in there, and then a Frank Lampard in here, what happens is. Um, what happens is, because if, if they are the, like, like these LA Galaxy ones and stuff, everyone in the defence gets 10 chem. Lamp Gerard would also get 10 chemistry because he would get position manager and, and, uh, and 10 games loyalty would put him onto 10 chem. And Lampard would get 8 chemistry. So this is how the team would look. And then I'd switch into a 4 one 2 one 2 I'd play Gerard probably at CDM, uh, medium, medium, 3-star, three 3-star. Three Lampard would go as an outside midfielder. Um, Ericsson would go in at Cam, Son would go at striker. Now, at this point, I could actually take out now Icardi and um, Salah for Premier League players. I could switch to a full Premier League uh, outfit and just have Gerard and Lampard in there. Um, obviously, it would mean that we're, we're not using Lam and Alonso, um, but that's not a problem. And in, in the meantime, I do still have... Um, I do still have Antonio Valencia to sell... Because, um, remember, I bought him, his price went down to 200,000 coins. And I was like, yeah, screw that, I'm not selling him for 200,000. It looks like he's crept back up to about 210. There's probably actually one at 200. There you go, 200,000. 
but there's not many of them on the market. 195 there. So I've got 400, I've basically got 500,000 coins in the bank and 200,000 coins in Antonio Valencia. So no matter what, I'll be able to get La uh, Walker and Gerard and Lampard no matter what next week uh, on Friday when they come. And, you know, depending on who the rest of the footies are, the Icardi and Salah might get dropped for the other two footies winners. So we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, failing that, I could always do um, do something along the lines of this, swap those around like that, get myself an English left back um, to go in there or a legend left back to go in there, uh, start Ericsson up front and then go and get two Premier League midfielders here or get rid of Kyle Walker or even use Kyle Walker as uh, you know, as the, the left back there, uh, send him to the club, get in Philip Lahm here, um, like so, and get in uh, Alonso here, as so. And now at this point, um, we could have Lampard, Gerard Alonso and Ericsson as our midfield, and then all I would need to do is figure out who the right forward would be to get his chemistry. Maybe go and get uh, Arjen Robben team of the season or something like that. You know, there's so many options depending on who the SBCs are on Friday and what we can do with the rest of the team. But this, guys, is going to be the end of the video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.